Tonight, with President Biden out of the race, Democrats are lining up to back Vice President Harris to the top of the ticket. Just here in the past few hours, Harris picked up an endorsement from former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. Pelosi calling on Democrats to unite behind Harris to defeat Republican nominee, former President Donald Trump. Senator Joe Manchin, an independent from West Virginia, is calling for a mini primary. The former Democrat says he has no plans to run. He says the primary process would determine if the party does have the strongest candidate. The Biden-Harris Super PACs raised more than $150 million in the last 24 hours. And across the nation, prominent Democrats, they are backing the vice president, including Democrats here in Florida. Let's bring in 10 Tampa Bay's Aaron Parsegian here. Didn't take long for them to coalesce. Yeah, no, this is part of really two initial reactions from Democrats here in Florida. First, they're heralding President Biden's decision to bow out of the race as a selfless act. And second, they believe having Harris at the top of the ticket can energize voters ahead of November. As Vice President Kamala Harris kicks off her campaign for the Democratic nomination, she's already garnering big name support. I have full confidence in Vice President Harris, but it'll be interesting to see if other candidates step forward. Tampa Congresswoman Kathy Castor says she's looking forward to the convention, but is strongly endorsing Harris for the job. The stakes are high. Uh, and I think Vice President Harris is the right person at the right time to prosecute the case against Donald Trump, a convicted felon. From Castor on down, Florida's congressional Democrats and 236 of the 254 state delegates are backing Harris's candidacy, one they believe brings renewed energy to the race. I think there's a lot of excitement around that. Democratic voters like Patricia McDaniel are feeling the shift in groups like the Democratic Women's Club of Upper Pinellas. I supported Biden in um, 2020. Uh, but I felt like um, I felt like we needed a younger candidate uh, this time. I think she's eminently qualified. Some even telling us they were reluctantly supporting President Biden, but now are all in on Harris. The fact that she has that background uh, being a prosecutor and stuff, she's not new to the whole system. So she's ready today to take over if she needed to. Meantime, Republicans shifting their offense to the VP and criticizing Democratic Party leaders for circumventing the primaries by backing Harris ahead of the DNC. Florida GOP saying in a statement, for all the talk about saving democracy, the Democrat Party is choosing their candidate in a backroom deal. Dems like Castor are dismissing the characterization. It's been the ticket, the Biden-Harris ticket that has been endorsed uh, all along the way throughout the primary process. Uh, you know, you can't stop the hands of time. And we are just a few weeks now from the DNC, what, August 19th in Chicago. A lot of people are wondering, okay, if it is Harris, then who becomes the running mate? That's the number one question. We got a new Veep stakes as it, <laughs> as it goes. Uh, the RNC, obviously, we had one as well uh, with former President yeah. Trump tapping Ohio Senator J.D. Vance. Sure. Now, a number of names being thrown out on the Democratic side of things. One to look out for, though, Representative Castor pointed to this today, former astronaut and Arizona Senator Mark Kelly. All right, we know you'll stay on top of it. We'll keep watching. Thanks, Aaron, for that.